Hello and welcome to Classic Mini Restoration with me, Mini Tom. So you've just watched hopefully the video of the outer sill and you're about to watch the cross member repair um, which I did on the same day but because the video that I did all together was like maybe 46 minutes long after editing I thought I'd do it in two parts. So this is the second part to that video um, and basically I'm repairing part of the cross member. I'll do another video probably next weekend with the other repair and I say at the end of the video that I'm going to repair the rear bin. I've just looked on mini spares, they're about 31 quid, 37 quid, so I may buy that, but money compliant, you see. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, share, ring the bell, and enjoy it. Right, so here we are, we're setting the car. Yeah, some beautiful worlds there. Obviously, I'm not going to dress them back too much because there's going to be carpet on top of that. I'm really not fussed, but I just want to show you. The inside of where the um, the uh, outer sill goes, that's what you're looking for. Penetration all the way down. So it's a really good penetration, is that? So that's all good. Next job is to look at this cross member. So when I did these patches here, which isn't really a patch, it's basically a floor, um, I had to set this out. Now we did, I cut it there. I don't know if you can see that, it's, it's all right. Un picked it from these bits and the lip was all damaged so this from this point here is a new lip so that's all spot well there but the way it falls down is when I get to here I for some reason didn't finish it that I've just seen welded up but this bit I'd like to try and get the lip on it if I can and as well it's the same sort of thing on this side except I haven't cut any of that nastiness out it's all well actually no did I actually feels pretty solid so I might have actually cut that out already so let me just get that back on as well so it's pretty simple but just uh, see if we've got any time right so the home base near me was shutting down and I managed to get some of this uh, I think it's 1.25 mil thick, um, probably about 20, yeah, 25 mil on each side. Some of this angle. Uh, I'm going to use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up where I need to start it. Get my trusty sharpie and line up where that lip is for the outer sill. Where roughly I think that'll be there. I have to go a bit over. We'll do it in stages. So what I'm going to do first, where that mark is there, I'm going to basically cut into this side of it so that I can bend it up. So have a go at this. Now this is all, like I say, by eye. We'll see if it actually works. tease it up a little bit and obviously we'll flatten that back off cut it back flush when we get to that stage I just want to make sure I'm getting everything lined up properly so we're looking at an angle of about that and then that should be in the right place there where it falls down that should be in the right place so we'll cut it there again and it'll come back up on itself you could of course if you want to be scientific, measure this sort of stuff with a mitre gauge and draw it all out, but we ain't got time for that. We're skilled fabricators on this channel, aren't we? we do things by eye. So that's lined up perfectly where that bend is, and this one actually, <laughs> I'm surprised that. I've done it first time, it's not a, I've not marked anything up, I'm just absolutely shocked. I actually can't believe it, it's done it. I'm, uh, I'm chuffed at that. So what we're doing now is, we'll mark where them, uh, we'll mark where them bits come up the back of it, with the Sharpie. We can cut them back, weld it up. Oh, and I'll mark it on top there as well where it's gonna finish. So I cut them back, weld up on these bits, 
drill some holes and get it popped in. Oh, and as well, I need to grind that out. So I'll mark that while I'm here. I just need to be a little bit careful because Because my seatbelt anchor point's there, so I just need to make allowances to keep that in the right place. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that well alone. So I need to cut out roughly there to weld that in on the bottom there, put a bit higher up. So mark them out. Put the rough lines down. So I think first what we'll do is. We'll get, like I say, them bits cut back with probably with grinder, weld them up, and then we'll see sort of where we're going to lie, make sure we're 100% happy with where we're going to put these, and then we'll do the cut. For some reason my video is still playing. Why is it not stopping? All right, so I'm going to try and get some close-up videos of the welding, so I've basically tacked that one to get that one positioned right this one's pretty decent but you will notice that I have got a bit of a gap there now so hopefully the weld will fill it up if not we'll do a sort of crisscrossing over it so bear with me while I just tap this down a little bit so. Gosh. don't know how much you can see of this so we will hope for the best and we'll weld this up I still can't believe I got that right first time. That doesn't normally happen. So, see there the back of it, got some decent penetration going up here, I've got a bit of a pin all there, but we've got some decent penetration going up, and that's the top, I don't know how well you can see it in this light, but yeah, got a pin all, so I just need to fix that, like I said there was a bit of a gap between it, so it's to be expected really, I'll just put a bit of weld on there. I'll just try and fit it again, make sure that we're happy. Nothing needs tweaking. So, I'm going to get that bit welded up. That's a bit of a big gap as well, is that? So, we'll see how we get on with that one. But uh, yeah, it should be alright. We'll make it work. I'll uh, just zoom in a bit and see if you can see that. Oh, I can't zoom in. Um, yeah, hopefully, you can see what I'm doing.
don't know how much you saw of that. I tried to get it in picture, but obviously with a mask on, it's difficult to see what you're doing as well. So I'll uh, grind them bits down right quick, pop some holes in here, cut that down. Maybe we'll get half of the uh, cross number done, we'll see. Right, so I really couldn't get a good camera angle without me being in the way to weld all this up, so I welded this lot off camera. Uh, it needs a bit of a dress up, but like any weld, it'll need a dress up. Next, what I wanted to talk to you about was um, when you've got a situation like I have where the floor in places is a little bit lower than what it should be. I know that um, a lot of people use Clecos, which are really, really good. Uh, I know that Sean C in particular uses uh, a drill. He goes through it with like a three mil drill bit and then puts a self-tapping screw through it. And I wanted to show you something which I've been using, which I find even easier and even faster. And what these are, it's a hex head uh, bolt, self-tapping and also self-drilling. So what that does is you spin it in your drill and it basically cuts its own little hole through it and then screws itself shut. So, 8mm uh, socket, I guess you'd call it. And basically, you've, you've already got these holes from when you've done your, your punching anyway. So. Brilliant. Right, let me get me over a drill. Don't know if you could tell, but on this channel, I don't really do uh, takes and things like that. I just sort of film it if it works great if you don't then, then you get to see me mess up so like i say it's as easy as that and you can see there that's got a nice flush edge so what i can do is then i can plug weld that bit and that one and that one's all sorted so i'll put one in there i'll put a couple in here and i'll put a couple down here but it doesn't meet up as well but i mean you see how fast that was and that, that's, that's a tip for uh, anyone that's sort of using the the pilot hole plus the uh, self-tapping screws these little things, they're pretty cheap. You can reuse them a few times. Obviously, they do go a bit blunt on the ends eventually, but you get your use out of them. A lot, lot faster. A lot faster. So, there you go. If you can see them anywhere, a lot of automotive shops will uh, I'll stock them anywhere. Some use the, uh, the posi drive head, but if you can try and get the hex one, it just stays in your drill a bit easier when you're doing it. So whack one in there. And then we'll put one in there as well. Now I'll probably be able to show you the plug welds because obviously it's on a flatter surface. And then what I'll do is I'll get these plug welded up and then that'll have to be it for tonight because on a, it's a Saturday. The cutoff time is six o'clock and it is very fast approaching that. So, you know, we get, you know, we get into that stage now where I can't make too much noise. Um, so we'll get this plug welded up hopefully, we'll have to dress it off next time when we uh, come out to do the car. Which is an issue because it won't take long anyway. And yeah, that's where we are at. Where's my hammer gone? Oh, it's always case in it, you always lose your bloody tools. Where have I just put my hammer? There. Beautiful. So we'll get these ones welded up and then we'll take these out and then we'll just weld the hole up. Truth. Have my welds held? You will see. It's 
so then we'll uh, just plug these up. A couple of good ones. What I'm trying to do with these, because obviously there's a hole straight through it, I'm trying to catch the bottom panel and then in a hope that that will fill with a pull and then sort of spiral it out to the top. I mean, I'm keeping a bit of a, a more of a plug on these just so that anything that I don't catch, the metal will sink through into it. Ow. Yeah, two more to do, and that's about a bit done. Beautiful. So, uh, bring you in, and you can see the weld. So, there's the plugs, and obviously, there's a seam which looks a bit messy. It was quite thin on there, to be honest with you, and I probably could have taken a bit more time to, uh, to clean up the surfaces. Uh, but it's welded, it's nice and strong, and it'll clean up alright. So, all is well. Uh, I think, to be honest, that's going to have to be it. I'll uh, I'll get this wire brushed quickly and just put a bit of um, etch primer on it just to stop it from going rusty. Um, and that's it. So next time we are out here, we will dress up the welds on there. We will repair the back part of the cross member, which. I've, st I've pretty much started already anyway, it's really not too involved, so it'll be a similar sort of thing to that, but hopefully you've enjoyed seeing me make that bit of panel to go in there. Um, again, that, I mean, I'm lucky really that I've got that metal, and it would already pre-bent for me, but if not, you can stick it in a bender if you've got one, and just, you know, bend away. So we've got that to do, we've also got, I don't know if you can see it because my, uh, oh no, you can see it, down there, so we have the rear bins put back in. Um, which is, I'll just try and show you it. This manky, manky piece of metal. But you know, it's, it's kind of all still there. That's a little bit shorter on this edge here. Um, I couldn't get my drill into the bottom part to, to cut it out, so I had to just sort of grind it off. And then there's the bottom part here, which is rotten. I'm really in two minds of whether to actually try and repair that or not yet. It's just so rotten. But I have got that bit of angle, which might just help. Do you know what? The shape is still there, kind of. I will do a video on repairing this and what makes it better is that because the shape is still there I can pretty much do it um, outside the car so you can see it a lot easier so we will go to the hassle of trying my hardest to show you this but no I just don't know where it's corroding to it just goes so far up it and you can see there where they've repaired it in past. They've, they've put like a um, tiger seal on it. Yeah, it's, it's knackered, is that? That's knackered. So I think when I've looked at these before, mini spares sell them and they aren't the cheapest. They really aren't the cheapest for what it is. It's got the seatbelt anchor point as well on it, has it? I'm gonna think about it. I don't think it's not doable. You know, if I have to get a flat bit of metal and put it, if I have to get a flat bit of metal and put it around here, then I will do. I'd like to try and use this where I can, really, but. I mean, you can already see straight away, but that's, so you can see it, 
that's where coercion is. Trying to weld that, it'll be an absolute nightmare, so. Dilemmas. Well, I think about it. That's, you know, it's coming up. I need, I need to start thinking about that one because that one is coming up, but for now, let's get this uh, cross member sorted out. And then I might try and do that chewing up video for you. And then we'll get to whatever we're going to do with that one. We'll see. So, anyway, enough of me whittering on. Hope you enjoyed the video. It might have been a bit longer one this time. I've just tried to capture as many welding parts as I can for Alex. Um, hopefully you found it enjoyable. Hopefully you want to like and subscribe and share and ring that bell. If you do, brilliant. If you've got any questions or any feedback, comments below, stick them in there. I try and reply to everyone. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you haven't, tell me why. You know, I don't mind. I can take a bit of, uh, a bit of bashing now and again. One thing I will say is that I've, I'll sort of say to myself, when I was welding the um, square patch over where the jacking point is, I did put too much heat into that part. Nothing's warped as such, but don't, you know, I've, I've done it because I've done it, and it, well, my, my bag's some sort of rushing, but if you can, try and take your time, do it properly, do a little bit of time, let it cool down, blow off some cross and press there if you need to, and come back to it. But that's my only criticism for myself on this video. That and that my worlds look a bit poor down there, but yeah. That's why Argos very kindly gave me a new grinder. Kind of. Right, hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and share. Sorry the camera's a bit shaky, I'm trying to take my gloves off. Um, yeah, all the best. See ya.